Hey everyone! This video is just going to be all over the place and it's only because I feel bad that I haven't been making any videos. We had um, all the Christmas excitement and all the Christmas babies going out. Um, I started the furry babies and um, then ended up having to have emergency surgery which I will talk more about in this video. And um, so after surgery I was given some restrictions and just to let you know I'm not really good with being restricted. Uh, I have a lot of energy as you may have noticed and I have a hard time sitting still. But I thought I you know I'll get the furry babies done because you know all the heavy lifting mostly is finished. All I have to do is basically embellish them. And um, so I'm, I'm going to be doing that probably this weekend. But for today, I wanted to switch gears and do something a little bit fun. And um, my seven-year-old and I went on Etsy and we found a pattern for a teddy bear he loved. And this is the teddy bear. Now, in no way do I expect to produce this teddy bear. And that's okay because um, that's the fun part, right? Making it your own. This is the pattern that I paid for and downloaded. Go down to probably Kinko's and enlarge that a bit to make it the size bear that I want because this will be far too small for me to work with. I'm not even sure that's the size it's supposed to be. It looks like it, it's supposed to be um, blown up just a bit. So I'm gonna do that in a few minutes. I'm gonna get somebody to drive me out to Kinko's. Um, I can drive but I'm just not supposed to. I don't know why. Putting your foot on the gas doesn't feel like it takes that much abdominal steam, but I guess it does. The other thing I'm gonna do before I run out to Kinko's is I'm gonna make some baby slippers. These little baby slippers. I have some baby clothes that I have been working on. I just wanted to have some fun and do some of my dolls for the show in clothes that you're not gonna see on every other single baby. And I, you know, I challenge everybody to do that. I mean, there's a lot of fun going out and doing all that shopping. You know, a lot of designers make some beautiful clothes. And I'm still gonna do that for, you know, regular babies. But for special babies, I, I just kind of want to play around with making my own outfits for them. And so a couple of these outfits that I have, have kind of odd colors and stuff. And, and I can't find like little shoes or slippers that really go with them that I really, really like. So I thought, heck, I will just make them. I've never made a baby shoe in my life, but I'm going to give it a try. And it's a three piece pattern. So I don't see that it will be too terrible. Um, I cut it all out in different sizes. I did preemie, newborn, and zero to three because I don't know what the finished size is really going to look I like. I bought some really cute um, muslin and uh, you know that kind of thing for making the baby shoes. Now this is a bunny suit that it was here. All the little filling is falling out. This is a bunny suit that was intended for one of the furry babies that I made. However, um, in my attempt to sew it and turn it into a body, I failed completely. It's, it just wasn't going to work. It was too bulky. Um, the baby looks too swollen. I just didn't like it. So what I ended up doing was having um, somebody that I know from a doll forum make me a bunch of cuddle bodies. When those came in, I'm still waiting for four more, but I, have, I had seven of them that she made. And so I got seven of the babies done and in their cuddle bodies, and then I put them inside of the suit. But with this one, um, it, it became ripped and torn as I was trying to manage it. And so I didn't want to toss it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make that bear with this suit. So I'm just gonna rip through all the seams to salvage some of this, this fur for my bear. Even though that bear is intended to be made with like German mohair, I thought, well, I don't have any German mohair and I don't wanna to wait to order some. And I have this, being somebody who, I'm not a manufacturer, but I am making these babies and I am using a lot of plastic and paint and a lot of things that get thrown away. And I feel really bad. I, I would prefer to make things out of things that already exist. And if there were a way to do it, I certainly would with these babies. Um, my hope is that they become heirlooms and that they don't end up in a trash bin, at least not for the next 30 or 40 years. I'm hoping that whoever buys one now, you know, passes it on and that person keeps it and passes it on. 
and that makes me feel a little bit better. Again, that's just my hope. But I enjoy and have always made things from other things. And with this bunny suit, I didn't want to toss it. I am buying some poly pellets from a place that actually recycles plastic bottles and turns them into plastic pellets. I don't use plastic pellets on all my babies, but I did use them on these fuzzy babies. So that made me feel good to buy those. I'm gonna look around a little bit more. I don't know what the carbon footprint is of glass beads, uh, but unfortunately the poly pellets just aren't heavy enough to weight the babies. Um, as far as clothing on babies, I wanna lean more towards, um, you know, baby clothes that are made with natural things. Uh, maybe upcycling some baby clothes. I know everybody wants some expensive outfit that has its tags on it and they feel like this makes this doll worth so much more. But for me, I don't quite feel that way. Um, I find the cutest vintage, and I don't mean like 100 year old, 80 year old um, christening gowns that you know are yellowed. I'm talking about things that have been you know, handed down or or brought to a, uh, a consignment store in the last couple of years. I mean, they're in great shape. A lot of that stuff is super cute and came from lovely boutiques. Some of it is older, maybe 1980s, 1970s. And it's super nostalgic for me and really, really cute. Look at that, that's a lot of fabric. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm gonna look more, in that, more into that. Uh, just because, I mean, you know, Carter, Carter's makes some really, really adorable things and I love their clothes. But I feel weird, um, I don't know, making more garbage and consuming more stuff. My son has actually been an inspiration to me. He does not buy anything new anymore. I mean, his socks and his underwear, he does buy new. And I think that's a, a good thing. But he, um, you know, young people really like designer things usually and like expensive things and and he appreciates that but he also loves um, thrift shops and consignment finds and he um, I think I've over the last three or four years I don't think he's purchased anything that was new even when he was on a television show you know, and they were purchasing clothes and the the stylists were looking for things for him uh, he always requested you know, vintage clothes, but he, he liked that. He appreciated that. He sent them out on a lot of wild goose chases, that's for sure, finding things that he would like. But I respect that. And I, myself, I'm not a big consumer of clothing. Is this torture watching me tear this apart? I know if somebody who is a, a true seamstress is probably going, there is a much easier way to do that, much more practical way, and I apologize. Um, I am not a textile artist. I'm just winging it here. But anyway, yeah, so he hasn't purchased any new clothing and I I'm, I don't really buy a lot of clothing myself. I'm pretty particular. I only wear gray, black. Once in a while I might wear white and um, I do have a couple of things that were gifts to me that are kind of a a wine color or a deep purple color, which is not a color I actually like, but I guess it it looks okay on me. Um, I don't I don't really wear color. It doesn't feel good to me. I don't like to. I love color. I like working with color, but as for putting color on my body, I'm just a plain old black bird. I just I don't need all of that. This is going to be great, and I think it's because you know when you trim the muzzle. I think this is gonna trim down really nice. It's so soft, it's very microfiber-esque. It probably is, I just don't know. And these little black things that you're seeing are the recycled pellets that I, I bought for the fuzzy babies. This thing was stuffed full of them. Let me show them to you. This is what they look like. And I have this fear, they do look like seeds, and I have this fear that when somebody buys the babies, they're gonna see these little black beads and it's gonna go on YouTube or Facebook saying, St. Cloud Nursery stuffs her babies with chia seeds or something, I don't know. I don't, they're, they're just recycled pellets. Trying to keep plastic out of the bellies of birds. I know for a lot of people, they don't really care one way or the other, and no judgment. If it's not your bag and you don't care, then you don't care, I can't talk you into it, it's not my job. But for myself, um, I don't know, I just know that 
our planet's full of garbage and the countries that we used to sell our recyclables to are no longer taking it because it's just not um, producing enough, enough income for the people who were doing it. And so it's getting sent back to us. And, you know, we're going to be living, it's like Wally. We're going to be living on top of our garbage. Maybe you and I won't, but our kids and grandkids might. And I don't want, I don't want to feel like that's what I'm leaving behind. My, there's lots, too many things we don't need. And again, I have a lot of nerve saying that considering that I make things out of new materials um, to sell. So I'm no different than those big companies that are doing it, right? But I'm just going to try to be more cautious. I have been trying to figure out ways to make up for that in my personal life. Since in my professional life I'm, I'm using new materials, I thought, you know, maybe in my personal life I could, um, I could waste less. I am driving. I'm not supposed to be driving yet. I have another week on driving restriction. Um, but I'm not going far. I'm not going fast. I'm just going several blocks to go pick up my my little one from school and um, I you know I tried it out and say, just kind of see how it felt and I do have an automatic I have a little Jeep that's an automatic and um, so I don't have all of this pedal action and I'm not getting a lot of strain on my abs so I took my chances I, I wouldn't do this a lot but I think for a couple of minutes just to go pick up my kid. I don't think I'm going to do any damage. I had my um, appendix out, I don't know, like five years ago or something like that. And I actually drove myself from home from the hospital. Nobody said anything. So I'm figuring it was the same type of surgery. And um, nobody seemed to be bothered by that. I'm not on any pain medication, so, you know, I'm not in any pain. I just wanted to let everybody know, not everybody, like there's a million people who need to know, but you know, any of you who follow me um, are here on YouTube, and thank you very much, I appreciate that, uh, what happened, um, but I don't have any like chronic illnesses or anything, it was just a very freak thing that happened, and I guess it was building up, and it was inevitably going to happen, I just didn't know. And um, so just a disclaimer here, if you want to fast forward, it is going to be a lot of talk about reproductive organs and blood. So if that makes you squeamish and you're not interested in that, I would suggest you just fast forward a bit. I've been experiencing since I was 16, super heavy periods. I'm just one of those people. And I always make a joke about it because I also get pregnant very, very easily. And I also have gigantic babies. So I just assumed that all went hand in hand. And um, so I didn't complain about one because I had the benefits. The problem was that I just seemed to be always anemic, either a little bit anemic or a whole lot of anemic. And over the years, it's just gotten harder and harder and worse and worse with the anemia until finally my doctor said, you know, your anemia is almost to the point where you're gonna need to have a blood transfusion. So since we can't you know, manage this with diet and supplement, we might want to consider doing some other kind of procedure to stop you from um, having cycles. Even though a woman my age, and I will be open, I am 54 years old, should have or at least be going into perimenopause or menopause, I am nowhere close to it. It just seems that in my family, um, some of us just go this way. We have babies late in life and we just keep cycling for a really long time. We just have a good store of eggs. And so I went to go see an OBGYN who said, let's do an ablation. But first I have to do this test and that test. And so they did an endometrial biopsy and they scanned me and they did all that stuff just to make sure that there wasn't something funky going on in there before they started messing around with my insides. And everything came back fine. And she said, it's gonna be a while before I'm able to get you in for that procedure. In the meantime, why don't I give you a Depo-Provera injection so that we can stop your periods while we're waiting because your anemia is really funky. And I said, that would be awesome.